Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is Modeling with Functions. I hope you guys are doing well in your math class. I know this book is kind of a challenge. I hope these videos are helping. Um, and don't forget, all your lessons can be found at uh, MrMathBlog.com. So when you go there, make sure you click uh, the link at the top that says Integrated Math 1. All right, let's start with some definitions here. All right, so the input of a function is the x values, and that's called the independent variables. The output of a function where the y values is called the dependent variable, okay? So the value of the dependent variable totally depends on or is a function of the value of the independent variable. And I know what you're thinking. What the heck does that mean? Well, I have some examples here, and it'll help unwind all of this stuff. So identify the dependent and the independent variables in each. Here's number one. In winter, more electricity is used when outside temperature goes down. So if when it goes down, you're using your heater more, so that's what this means. So And less electricity when the outside temperature rises, okay? So the blank depends on what, okay? So the amount of the electricity is going to depend on what the outside temperature is, okay? So this is the the dependent variable. This depends on what the temperature is outside. So temperature would be the independent variable, okay? So the dependent is the amount of electricity, and the independent is the temperature, okay? That's all that stuff is talking about right there, okay? I just slid those directions up. All right, here's number two. The cost of shipping a package is based on its weight, okay? So the blank depends on what? Okay, so can, doesn't it make sense if you go to a post office and you mail a package? Have you ever seen them put it on a scale to weight? So the more it weighs, the more it costs. So the cost depends on what the weight is. So, uh, so the the dependent variable, the the dependent variable, the cost is depending on what the independent variable is, which is the weight. Okay. All right, let's try another one. The faster Tom walks, the quicker he gets home. Okay. So the time that uh, depends on how fast he walks or his speed right there. So the, uh, the dependent is the time, and the independent is the speed, okay? This one depends on this one. That's how I think. Which one's the dependent, and the other one is the independent, okay? All right. So, uh, so give a situation where time is the dependent variable, uh, and distance is the independent variable. Okay, this is just an example, you guys. So the time spent driving depends on the distance that you uh, drive. Okay, so the, the farther the distance, the more time it's going to take. So there's an example right there. Okay, in the number one of the last section, how do we know that the amount of electricity used is not the independent variable? Well, because the outside temperature does not depend on the amount of electricity used. The amount of electricity used depends on what the outside temperature is. All right, here's another definition. So if, uh, if x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable, well, that's what we've just been talking about, then we can use what's called functional notation. And instead of writing y, we write this thing right here, f parentheses x. And f parentheses x says f of x. So this right here, this little equation says y equals f of x. Okay, that's what this says. Y equals f of x. Where f is the name of the function. Okay, so instead of putting y, we put f of x if they want us to write functional notation. Okay, so functional notation just means replace y, your y equation, with f of x. Okay, so the dependent variable is a function of the independent variable, okay? So the dependent variable is y, and the independent variable is x, okay? So y is a function of x, all right? And also, y equals f of x. All right, that's it's not written so it's all spread out like that. But that's what I found in the textbook we're following. It's written like this right here. This says, this says y equals f of x. So the dependent variable right here is 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 equal a function of the independent variable y equals f of x okay all right and that's the only really new thing on this so write an equation in functional notation okay so here we go uh, Amanda babysits and charges five dollars an hour so so the time worked in hours is right here one, two, three, four hours and so the amount of money that she earns is five times that five times one. 5 times 2 equals 10. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20 right there, okay? So, so uh, which one is, uh, uh, so the, um, the amount of money that she earns is 5 times the number of hours that she works. Does that make sense, you guys? The amount of money she earns, multiply it by 5, that's how uh, 
times the number of hours she worked. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, let's see. So uh, an algebra, uh, algebraic expression that defines a function is called a, a function rule. Okay. So write an al uh, write an equation. Uh, using two variables to show this relationship. Okay, so the amount earned is five times the number of hours er, uh, worked. Okay, so which one depended on what? Well, the amount earned was uh, our dependent. It depends on how many hours she worked. So the independent, the dependent is y. So uh, the amount earned uh, is five times the number of hours worked. Okay, let's go back to this chart. This gives us a little hint also. The amount earned is y, the time worked is x right here. So that's what we're going to go and put right here. The amount earned is y, and the number of hours worked is x. So we're going to put that right there. Okay, and then so y equals 5x. That's all this says right there. That's, this is all spread out, and this is a put uh, closer together right there. And um, uh, so the dependent variable is a function of the independent variable. All right, so write an equation uh, in functional notation, okay? So this isn't in functional notation. This is just an equation right here, okay? This is an equation using two variables, all right? If I wanted to put this in functional notation, I would change y for f of x. It would be the same equation, f of x equals 5x. All right, so here we're going to write an equation in functional notation, okay? Remember, functional notation is y equals f of x. This is section C I just brought from, from back before right there. Okay, so we just exchanged y for f of x. They're the same equations except this f of x is now expressing it in functional notation. We just change y for f of x. So y equals f of x, okay? All right, it's that easy, you guys. So can y be used instead of f of x in functional notation? If so, tell why, if not, give an example of a function not written in functional notation and the same function written in, in, in functional notation. I know you're thinking, huh? Well, I, I took it apart like this, you guys. Remember, uh, y equals f of x. So, so can a, a y be used instead of f of x in functional notation, okay? No, functional notation requires that we use f of x instead of y. So we're not going to have like y equals, say, 5x. We're going to have f of x equals 5x. All right, so, so give an example. So sample answers, here's an equation. Y equals 5x min minus 8. This is not functional notation because it's not written with f of x. But if we exchange this y with f of x equals 5x minus 8, all of a sudden it's in functional notation. All right, all right if you're in my class, I would assign you guys that assignment right there. Okay. All right, and, and if you guys can, you don't have to, you guys, but if you can, it encourages me to keep doing these. So take care, you guys.